Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our strawberries project. Ooh. Ooh. We have Michael here working the cameras. Hello. And Michael is my husband. We're married. Sometimes it's confused on who I'm married to, but it's Michael. It's, wait, who? <laughs> you? Me. I okay, think. I'm it. Ooh. Okay, I'm really excited for this project because it's um, active and fun and we get to drop in paint and let it move and I'm just excited. So we're gonna be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to be putting in our strawberries. Our second step is we will start to put in our stems and our leaves. Our third step is we will be putting in um, the smaller strawberries and the yellow centers for our flowers. Our fourth step is we will start to kind of outline those flowers. And then our very last step, are, um, we're gonna put in the seeds and do little dots and all of this stuff, okay? Lovely. I am using four paint colors for this project. So my very first color is lemon yellow, very bright, happy yellow. My second color is honey brown. My third color is red. And my last color is Tahoe blue. Now I'm using our in-house paint brand, which is Dandelion Paint Co. These are super vibrant um, dye-based paints liquid watercolors. I think they're really fun to work with and hopefully you guys do too. Um, I am using our Let's Make Art watercolor paper, which is um, cold press wood pulp paper, which um, I actually found tends to work better with liquid and dye based paints. Um, those two kind of work nicely together. And I'm using my Holbein soft tape, which is the best tape in the whole world. And I'm using three paint brushes, round two, round six, and round 12. Okay, I think that's all my supplies. Let's do it. Let's do it. So let's start with our oath and then we will get into it. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. You got a ding. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so our first step is we are gonna start with putting in our strawberries. Now, there is no outline with this project, and so you can do this one of two ways. You can just like start painting and just adjust your composition as you go, or if you're still learning how to do composition and trying to set things up and it's kind of stressful, sometimes just doing a little sketch of where things are gonna go before you start painting can just ease your mind. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, grab a pencil, or if you have a watercolor pencil, that works great too. And if you're like, but I don't draw, I don't know how to do that. Don't think of it as drawing. We are just making marks and basic shapes on our paper. So then we have a guide when we go to paint. So I'm using my reference photo for my reference. And then I'm gonna say, okay, let's just start. So here's gonna be a strawberry. Here's another one. And I'm just gonna do kind of oval shapes for my strawberries. And here's a bigger one, smaller one. And your painting's done. Thanks for coming to Let's Make Art today. <laughs> that, and that's it. <laughs> um, and then, let's see. And then you can like adjust from here too. But let's put in some of the other elements before we make any of those other adjustments. I might erase that. So when it comes to like the stems and things like that, what we're really paying attention to is the angle and the curve. So if I'm like, okay, I want one to go this way this way, here's a big leaf, go up. And remember this whole painting is all about um, movement and play. So it's okay if your lines are really curved and it's okay if they're super angled. Like this is one of those paintings where give yourself permission and the freedom to play and experiment and have fun. And just by seeing like the angles of stuff, when we're done, you'll have a better idea of the composition. Boop. Maybe some of these connect, maybe some of them don't. We're not paying too much attention to like the real rules of gravity or anything here. This is more of an illustration. Okay, so now that I've sketched my painting, I'm gonna kind of look at the whole thing and just pay attention to any areas that feel um, off. 
So I'm mostly centered, which is good. I am feeling like this is a large gap here. Okay, so I'm like, what can I do there to activate this space? What if I actually do another strawberry here? And I'll do it smaller so it doesn't take over. And besides that, that feels pretty good. There's a big leaf. Okay. Now I also want to acknowledge that when it comes to composition and painting, a line drawing is going to have a very different composition than the actual painting. And that's because colors and values affect your composition as well. If you have all red in one area, it's really easy for your eye to like go to that one area. So what I'm saying is after we put paint in, you'll still might have to make some adjustments because we added color and value. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do the fun part, which is wet on wet with strawberries. I'm going to start by using my round 12, but you can use whatever brush you have. I'm going to get it wet, hit it off the side of the cup, and then I'm going to make strawberry shapes kind of following my ovals. And I brought actual strawberries here so you guys can see the sheer variation in wonkiness with strawberries. So if your strawberry is like, that looks like a ball, well, that one is pretty round, so you're not doing it wrong. So once you shape it using water, I'm gonna grab just red paint and I'm gonna drop it in the bottom and just let it move. That's my favorite part of the whole thing. Me too because you never really know what you're going to get, you know? And as it dries, it's gonna change as well. And I'm gonna do a little bit more red on my palette. Now, if you want your red to have like um, hints of purple, like if you see here, this strawberry, like this color red is different than this color red, right? So allow yourself to have variation in shape, but also in hue. If you want to add a tiny, tiny bit of Tahoe blue to that red to give like a darker red purple feel, you can. You can also add a little bit of yellow in there, which will give it a warmer, like scar more scarlet tone. So allow yourself to play with different hues of purple. And hue just means color. Okay, here we go. I have a, uh, <clears throat> a love-hate relationship with strawberries because I hate eating them. Yes. But I love them botanically. Uh, the like red part of the strawberry is not the fruit. That's called accessory flesh. Each of the little seeds is a fruit. And the whole thing together is called an akeen. It's a, a type of fruit. So it's like a bunch of seeds embedded on accessory flesh. <laughs> so you're saying all these little dots on this. Those are individual fruits. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Akings are like a weird, I mean, there's probably someone in botany currently who's correcting me in their head. It's been years for me, you know, yeah. but I remember strawberries uh, from botany class because akings were so unique. Are there any other kind of like berries or fruits that we, that are actual akings or is it just strawberries? Uh, it's, there are, but you're not really, I don't know if you could picture them in your head. So there's things like buttercup, the flower, okay. uh, buckwheat. Quinoa, mm, okay. cannabis. They are akings, but uh, you know, strawberry is probably the most well known and recognizable of them. They're miscategorized as a droop for a while. A droop is a different type of fruit that has multiple seeds, like a blackberry or something. Mm. But because they're on the outside and the yummy part of the strawberry uh, is a part of the fruit, it's an akine. Well, I love strawberries. I know you don't like to eat them, but they're... I like the flavor of them. I like fake strawberry flavor. Ooh, I do not like fake strawberry like, flavor. Give me some Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> okay, so I also want to acknowledge that you. I'm dropping in color, and then I'm just kind of leaving it. I'm letting it move and do its own thing. And this is the beautiful part about watercolor um, that we have to remember. We don't have to control every aspect of it. And I know when we're new to painting... We want to like be like work things back and forth. We want it to be very precise. And a lot of that is just because we're scared, but there is so much freedom in letting the water and the paint do the work 
for you. And so I really want you to embrace that with this wet on wet technique. All of my strawberries are looking beautiful. You can see I dropped in a little bit of yellow right here, which I really like. Another thing that I like to do is if you want, you can even like the strawberries that are next to each other, you can grab some of this paint and just move it over. Generally, I try and make the tops a little bit thicker. And then as it goes down, it comes to kind of a rounded point, but allow there to be wonkiness in your strawberry shape, okay? And I'm gonna see what it's like. That might have been too brown, which is fine. I'm just gonna drop more red in there. And I'm gonna see what it's like when I grab a tiny bit of this blue and mix it with the red. See how I get this really gorgeous kind of darker red purpley tone. So let's add that in there. So I'm gonna do just water here. And now my water is pink, as you can see, um, but that doesn't bother me. I think I don't need to like clean out my water cup or anything. I'm gonna drop in more. Let's do a bigger guy right here. Let's drop in some of that darker red and purpley color. And the reason why I'm dropping the color at the bottom as opposed to the top is because if you look at how strawberries ripen, I feel like they start at the bottom, the color, and then like you could get full all the way, but at the top, there's just that little bit of white, sometimes green, just that hint. Again, as someone who doesn't eat them, is that part gross to eat? The, the white, white part? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, it's not as sweet as the red part. Is it sour? No. I think that's what keeps me away from strawberries. I feel like I had a sour one one time. <laughs> and you're like, never again. Never again. <laughs> Strawberry, you tricked me. Okay, and you can do baby tiny ones too. Um, we have a son, Arlo, and he's three. He's a little bit delayed in his speech, but he just started saying more words and he says, baby. <laughs> it's so cute, he loves babies. So whenever I say baby, I think of him, baby. Happy baby, he starts saying. His daycare got a new puppy. It's a mini poodle. And I took him today and he kept doing baby <laughs> like that with his voice. I was like, what are you doing? Baby. baby. Okay. So this is a great start. Know that you can always add more strawberries as you go. I feel pretty balanced in my composition across the board of where things are going. And now we can start putting in our stems and our leaves. I'm gonna to switch to my round six, or you can do your round two, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And I'm gonna mix some greens. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and on my palette, I'm gonna pick up some Tahoe and some honey, which is gonna give me one color green. And then I'm gonna mix some Tahoe and some lemon, which is gonna give me a way more brighter green. See how vibrant that is? Hey, you're still not worried about that red water when you're doing green colors? Not really because um, I'm embracing like looseness here. Okay. Now I do want you guys to keep in mind that red and green are opposite each other on the color wheel. So when they mix together, they do make brown. Um, so if I were to do some, if I was going for precision here and a light wash of green, then I would not want red cup water. Okay, but for this, I think it will be fine. Um, I also like to, always like throw in extra blue with my greens on one edge because then I just have like options. These are all my green options plus more because when you add water to it, it lightens. You can also even go for more of just the honey brown, which is kind of like this gold color. So now I have a bunch of greens to pull from and um, I like to just mix it up as I go. And we are going to start by grabbing some of this green and I'm gonna put in a leaf. Now, strawberry leaves are kind of rounded, like pretty round, um, with a slightly serrated edge, which means it kind of pokes out. So I'm gonna, what I, how I like to do it is I like to kind of shape it, which is round. So see how it's kind of like this round? And then I'll pick up some fresh color and either using the tip of my six or a two, 
I'll put in those slight serrations. See that? It just kind of like pokes out a little bit. And then because I like color, I always like to like drop in extra colors, let that move. Let the watercolor do the work for me. So there's one and then it's okay if your green touches the strawberry a little bit, like if you were to put in these little leaves right here, if your strawberry is still wet, that green can like move. And I'm fine with that because in how we see strawberries naturally is sometimes that green does bleed into the actual berry itself. So don't let that um, stress you out if that happens. Now, when it comes to these like round leaves that are turned and on their side, they thin out, right? Because when you look at the leaf flat, it's nice and rounded. And then if you turn it, it's thin. So we have a nice thin leaf. I like to just do a big swoop and then add a little bit of serration. Okay. And I'm just going to keep mixing colors as I go. Boop, boop, boop. This is a nice big leaf here. We always refer to those serrated type leaves as toothy. Oh, really? Yeah. I actually like that better. Toothy leaves. Toothy leaves. It's actually pretty funny because when I... Um, started painting watercolors a lot. Michael, my husband, was in was a biology major in college, and so all of his friends studied like plants and knew them really well. And so sometimes I would paint something, and his friends would message me, and they were so nice. They're like, this is beautiful, but your leaves are the incorrect leaves for this type of flower. <laughs> it was Eric, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Eric. <laughs> and I just kind of giggled. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. I know. It's okay. <laughs> I need you to compound pollinate that leaf structure. And so now whenever I paint flowers or leaves, I'm like, I know someone who knows plants is watching me and being like, that is not the correct thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to grab my two and start putting in some of the stems. So as you can see, I kind of like to work back and forth um, where like I'll do some leaves, I'll do some stems and kind of like do a dance. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that and you just like doing all of the things at once, that's fine too. And to get a thin line, I want to make sure that when I pick up paint, because even with a round two, if it's full of water and paint, it still is going to have like a thicker tip. So to make sure it's nice and thin, I'll get rid of the excess water or I'll take my brush and flatten it and then turn it and flatten it. And then so now the edge itself has kind of like squished together to a point. And then I do light pressure and just make my mark and just go for it. What's your favorite way to eat strawberries? On an angel food cake with whipped cream? Oh yeah, I actually really love vanilla almond granola, Ooh. cut up strawberries Ooh. and a little bit of milk and I eat it like cereal. That sounds great. It's really good. I mean, again, I don't like strawberries. <laughs> like that sounds delicious. I'm being the voice of the people. I, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to agree On a tres you. leche cake? Oh, yeah. Tres leche is bomb with strawberries. Okay, and... Can you tell I'm hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I skipped breakfast? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to add more leaves. And again, just kind of going back and forth. Boop. For me, sometimes it's easy to get kind of like... When I did this project originally when I was making it, it was really stressing me out, the leaves and the angles. And then I realized that when I just decided to commit and go for it and um, allowed myself play, I created a better painting. I probably did about four or five versions of this. And this one was the one where I was just like, I'm just gonna go for it, I'm just gonna be wild. And that one was my favorite. So I'm saying that in the way, if you're looking at this and you're like really afraid to put in a leaf or if you're really afraid to um, add a line right there, I just want you to know that it's totally normal to feel that, but we're gonna like move forward with confidence and just be like, I'm doing this, this right here. This is where a leaf is going. 
Do you ever, when you're just like painting alone, decide to throw faces on things, or is that not a good thing? <laughs> just like make all the strawberries like little faces. No, but that is the funniest thing, and I really want to do that now. <laughs> Maybe I will at the end. Okay, boo boo boo. And even now, I'm like going off the sketch that I did. Like, um, not going off it. I'm going away from it. Going rogue. I'm going rogue. Even from my sketch that I did, I'm going rogue. So know that you can go rogue whenever you want. She's off the rails, people. Okay, let's bring some. Comes this way. And remember, they don't have to be one connected stem. They can just start and end anywhere you want. So, again... Just play. And I like doing these little tiny guys as well. I'm gonna drop a little bit of green in there to see how that moves. And think about these different spaces as ways to activate the area. So we still have like flowers and stuff to put in. So don't feel like you have to have every space filled up with veins and leaves. Veins? Stems? <laughs> Stems and leaves at this point. You don't have to have that totally filled up because we still have flowers to add and like little green strawberries. Um, so it's kind of more like a general... That feel, I'm going to just like leave that for now and we'll come back to it and I'm going to put in my um, little flowers. So the beautiful thing about strawberries, and I learned this from Michael, is fruits are flowers before they turn into fruits. That's how they define fruits, right? Yeah, the fruit is a product of a pollinated flower. Of a flower. So um, looking at different fruits, they have different stages of blooming. Sure. And strawberry flowers are actually these really dainty white little flowers that are beautiful. And so I really wanted to put that in here because I think that that color plays really well with all of this. So I'm gonna take some honey brown. Um, mine actually turned to a little green, so I'm gonna get some clean on my palette here. I'm gonna take my round two and just wherever I want a flower, I'm just gonna do a center. So kind of looking at where I have some of these areas. That are open. Let's do one here. Let's do one here. Strawberry, I mean, okay, so the the fruit has a bunch of seeds on the outside, which are actually the fruits, right? Mm -hmm. That would mean that each flower is actually a bunch of flowers clumped into one, kind of like how a sunflower is or a dandelion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not one flower that you're looking at. It's actually called a compound flower. And each of the little hairy things inside of it is usually a flower. So when a bee lands on it and pollinates it, it's actually pollinating like a hundred at once. No way, really? And that's how all the seeds form. Oh. Accessory flesh. Each seed on a, the outside of a strawberry been pollinated okay that's cool and then I just noticed that when I was doing my like strawberries like some of them got a jagged edge which is not a huge deal but for the sake of dropping in more color I can smooth some of these shapes out and then if you want you can drop in a little bit of yellow a little bit of honey a little bit of that blue red mixture you can even drop in a tiny bit of green along the top if it's still wet. But I just like having, like, look how cool this strawberry turned out. It is so, I think, ooh, that one's one of my, those are some of my favorite. Broadly gestures to stage. I'm like, this is my favorite. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Now, when it comes to the flower itself, the petals are white. 
And so what I like to do for the white petals is I actually like to use a little bit of color that I use for the center. So I'm gonna take my two and I'm just gonna pull color and just do tiny little flowers that are slightly, see how they're like that tan color from the honey? So I'm just giving a little hint of petal shape. That one I accidentally had blue on my brush. So you just kind of like pull that color out and roughly shape the petals. And Michael, maybe you'll know, I think there's five little petals. I have no idea. Okay. I was just gonna, I was thinking of formulating a question to you. You paint flowers so often. Mm -hmm. Do you look at a reference every time or do you really know what an iris looks like in your head? Um, when I first start painting irises, I have to look. Now, because I've painted so many, I've literally painted like five in the last month. Um, I don't have to look at a reference photo. I understand how, how their shape is. Yeah, because I don't. I look at them. And that's true for, that's going to be true for so many things. So when you first start out having a reference handy for anything, trees, flowers, fruits, whatever you're trying to paint, totally normal. And depending on how much you'll paint it, you might not need a reference photo anymore. Um, that is to say though, that that only happens when I paint something so much. It's not like if I paint something one time, I don't need a reference photo anymore. If they do have five little petals, um, I mean, saying it's rare might be miscalling it, but usually things are in even numbers because they split from a single point, like from a cell, and then it splits to two and then to four and then to eight. Oh. So having five is... Kind of so some, maybe there's not actually. No, no, no. It happens a lot. Okay. But like it's it's the outlier in nature. So I have all my open faced flowers, but then flowers also can move, right? We'll see some on the side. Now when flowers are on the, along the side, we don't really see the center because it's like the profile. So I'm gonna mix kind of like a neutral color. I'm gonna take a little bit of honey, a tiny bit of red, and a tiny bit of blue. And you can see it's like a barely there color. I'm going for like a neutral, almost like a gray. So you just keep mixing colors that are across from each other on the color wheel to neutralize colors. Okay, so now I have this kind of like neutral color. And then wherever I want to put a flower like on its side, like maybe I'll put one right here. And I'll just do three little boop, boop, boop. So maybe here. And you can put it anywhere. I mean, with this painting, um, I also love it because sometimes we have the tendency to overwork. With this painting, the more the merrier. The more leaves, the more flowers, the more interesting textures and colors. Like, honestly, go for it. Just let yourself play. Do one here. one here. Okay, that feels like a good start. And let's put in some green strawberries. So for that, I'm just gonna wet the area. It's the same process as putting in the red ones, except they're gonna be a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna grab some of my green, just kind of drop it in. And if you want it to be more warm, you just add a little bit more yellow. And it doesn't have to be a dark green, like strawberries when they're turning, to that color, the green is usually pretty light in value. So it's just like a little baby. Actually, I think it was about three years ago, it was the April box that I was holding Arlo as a newborn in my carrier yeah. while I taught the tutorials. Yeah, I think, yeah, he just turned three and he was just a newborn right during COVID, so. Where else do I want to put green strawberries? Let's do one right here. Okay. Okay, so now that I added all of these other elements, I need to add stems and kind of make them connect and activate some more spaces. So, like here, let's do a flower stem coming there. I'm gonna do a couple leaves coming off of it. Boop, boop.
So again, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to where these, these are going. We get it in our mind that when we see stems and leaves that they all have to connect and make it make sense. But with illustrations like this, you have complete freedom to defy all of those rules and just kind of play. And if your strawberries end up having faces on them, there's a good chance that they walked over to where they're at anyways. <laughs> they're unattached from a plant. Now I'm getting a better sense of how things are fitting together composition-wise. Do a little more here. And if you want to add like, if your leaves are dry, you can add like a little vein down the middle of them. Your hair is crunching your mic a little bit. Thank you. Okay, the only thing that feels a little bit sparse to me is this. Is that drawing your eye? Do you see that too? Yeah, I see it. So I'm going to put a leaf there because there's not enough room to put a strawberry. I could possibly do another flower, but the thing is, is a flower is a light value and um, I want to activate that space a little bit more. So I'm just going to take this leaf and make it much bigger. So I'm just going to... I said it before, but that also would have been a perfect spot to just put your signature. <laughs> right in the middle. I painted this. This needs a little stem. Now, when there are so many different elements, it's totally easy to like forget one and not have a stem coming off of a strawberry or something like that, that's okay. And then I like to kind of have, like check the edges and the perimeter as well, to be like, where can I add a little fella? Maybe a little tiny green strawberry is gonna come here. And I think I wanna do another strawberry right here. Drop in a little bit of color along the top. Little stem. That's funny. I feel like strawberries don't turn brown when you cut them like an apple does. They, uh, let me show you what they look like. Because I have some here that are a little... They kind of like turn this mushy white color. And some of them turn like a dark purpley. Like when they're that dark right there, that's when you're like, ooh, that's getting close to being bad. You're not selling me on them. <laughs> I don't need to sell you on them. Strawberries don't have to convince you of their value. <laughs> I'm a strong, independent strawberry. That's right. I'm just going to darken some of these reds, make them a bit more vibrant. This here. Consensus is that, you know, fruit that you grow in your garden or that your grandparents grow tastes better than from the grocery store, right? Like mm -hmm. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. strawberries the same mm -hmm. way? Mm -hmm. They're much better for mm -hmm. And actually, when we went to that, um, there is a farmer's market in Placerville, and we would get fresh strawberries there every weekend. And they were the best tasting strawberries I've ever had in my life. So juicy, so sweet like so much flavor. It's the same thing like sometimes store-bought ones are really like fleshy and just kind of don't have a ton of flavor. I mean, they're still good, but it's like just not as strong. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Now I'm gonna start adding some detail marks to my painting. So for my petals, I just wanna shape them a little bit on my leaf, on my flowers, but they're just gestural thin lines. So I'm gonna mix in neutral again. Take some red, take a little bit of yellow, take a little bit of blue, and you're gonna get this tan color. We just wanna make sure it's a little bit darker than whatever we're painting on so it kind of, so it shows up. Sorry, my apron keeps getting all wonky. 
That's a cute apron. Thank you. And then I'm going to take my round two, pick up a little bit of color, and I'm just going to kind of outline them. And you don't have to follow the shape of the color. You can just draw right on top. Kind of think about how um, in our Wabi Sabi box when we did kind of like the ink and wash. It's essentially drawing but with a paintbrush. And if some of your flowers have four petals and if some of them have five, that's okay. Because I guarantee you that when this is done, the person that sees this is not going to come up and say, that one flower has four petals instead of five. And even if they did that, you don't need that person in your life. I'm giving you permission to just cut them out. <laughs> you don't need that type of negativity. <laughs> But I love like, even like some of these flowers, when we added water to it and made it spread, like this beautiful bleeding texture um, can happen from things like that. And this is the actual joy of watercolor is as you're going back in, you can pay attention to those marks and you're like, wow, I didn't even mean to do that, but that is really beautiful. And that, if you can fall in love with that aspect, then watercolor, will always be a part of your life. I feel like that's the most important thing, more than anything, more than building the skill set, more than learning how to control, mixing colors, any of that. What actually matters is falling in love with the process of putting water and paint on the paper. That's really all you need to do. And so I like to give you guys a range of projects and things to try because I'm just trying to get you to fall in love with it. And what's gonna ring true for you is gonna ring, it's gonna be different for someone else, you know? Okay, so I shaped my petals on my flowers. I think I got all of them. I probably, I could have missed a couple. And then I'm gonna add like a turquoisey, um, like little dots. I love to add little dots on illustrations when I need to activate a space, but I don't have enough room for anything that I put in there. And as a way to introduce a new color. So I'm mixing, I have some green on my palette. I'm adding a little bit more blue in there to get this really pretty turquoise color. And then using that turquoise color, I'm gonna go and add these little dots on areas where it can use a little bit of something. And I feel like when you do little dots like this, it's the same kind of um, brings a little bit of like whimsy detail. Without having to do too much. And if you don't have room for three, you can do two. Now you might be saying, Sarah, but I have all these pencil marks. What do I do about that? You can totally erase the pencil marks. You just want to make sure that your painting is completely dry before you do that. So you don't smear any of the paint. So mine is not dry enough to do that yet, but as soon as it is, you can just take your eraser and work around. And then we just need to do our very last step, which is putting in the little seeds, but you wanna make sure that your strawberry is completely dry before you do this. Okay, so I dried my strawberries, but when I stood up to go get my dryer, I saw the painting from further away, which gives you a better idea of a composition Always, if you're not sure what's going on with your painting, step away from it, come back to it. And I noticed that my biggest strawberries are all along the bottom. Do you see that? Yes. And so there's a heaviness to this painting a little bit that I'm feeling when I stood up. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add one more smaller strawberry right here to kind of create a little bit of lightness. Does that make sense? Yes. I don't know. It's kind of weird trying to describe these things. You just break up the big berries. I just need, yes, I need, these are so big and the rest is not as big that I need to have variation to kind of break that up. So I'm just gonna do a smaller strawberry. I'm gonna do it right behind this green one. I'm gonna go for a lighter red. And then if, because I'm like, oh yeah, strawberries are in different stages of forming, maybe it has a little green top. I've got a throwback to a tutorial years ago, and maybe you say this all the time, but, uh, you know, stepping back and look at your painting is good. Also, use your cell phone camera. 
Mm -hmm. take a picture, and then go look at it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you might be like, why? Well, that's because when we see our painting in life, we're in a three-dimensional world. When you take a picture of your painting, it takes your painting and flattens it into a two-dimensional world for you, which is just easier to see because our paper is two-dimensional too. Does that make sense? Yeah. You have strawberry paint on your arm. Other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that feels a little bit better. And another option of what you can do to help balance that out. Should I do it? Yeah. I'm just gonna make one strawberry bigger up here. So look at where you can, like if you have space to add some heft <laughs> to your strawberry. Making a thick boy. And then just drop in that red. And because this is such a loose painting anyway, if you get lines and blooms and stuff like that, that's not a big deal. Maybe I'll drop in a little, ooh, that is strong. So see how dark that is? If that happens to you and you're like, oh no, all you have to do is lift it, wipe your brush, lift, wipe your brush, and then pick up more red and just drop it on top. Okay, that feels better to me already. Awesome. Now I'm going to mix like that dark purpley color. So a little bit of red, a little bit of Tahoe, more red if it's too purple. We're going for like a dark red. And then I'm just gonna do little dashes on my strawberries. Now remember, we're going for like an illustration style. So I'm keeping it loose. And the reason why we want our strawberries to be dry to do this, because when our Strawberries are wet and we drop in paint, that line will diffuse out. And we want these seeds to stay sharp. When you're painting all alone in your office mm -hmm. and you make an error, do you go, oh no? I do actually. <laughs> sometimes I curse like, and I'll be filming for like these. And sometimes I'll be only say like, oh shoot, but I'll say like, yeah, yeah, you know. The bad word. And then I chuckle at myself because I'm like, that totally recorded me saying a bad word messing up. I'm going to release all of those. <laughs> Just a super cut of Sarah Cray bad word. Yeah, it's pretty funny, but I do make a noise or I'll go. <gasps> My favorite. Yeah. And sometimes these little seeds, the little details really, I think, finish it up and tighten it up together. And as I'm working my way around, I see some strawberries that didn't get little stems to them. Let's fix that. I felt like there was one more. Oh, this guy. You can add some veins on some of these. Okay. And just this guy. Let's dry it before I add the seeds. And this is a heated craft tool, which is different than a blow dryer. Um, and it actually saves a ton of time. So if you've noticed yourself waiting for your painting to dry a lot before you can paint on it, I recommend that guy. I didn't start using it until this last year and it totally changed my life. Why is it different than a blow dryer? Um, because it's a softer, it doesn't like push, like a blow dryer blows hot air or air. Okay. This, it just provides heat. It like softly circulates. Yeah, because you could use a blow dryer, but if it's too strong and an area is too wet, it can make that paint actually move where um the craft heated tool won't it will just heat up the area also it's so tiny and cute also i'm not sure if blow dryers get too hot but you also can control the temperature on those so maybe it's not a big deal boop all right i think oh nope this little guy needs seeds should i do a little face 
Absolutely. All right, now the painting's done. There we go. Do you like my little face? <laughs> Love it. I'm going to add seeds around it too. So maybe the face blends in more. <laughs> Can't even tell. Well, there we go. There's our strawberry painting. I loved this project and I felt like it was really what tied this box all together for me, which is how does your garden grow? Because I really wanted to focus on that feeling of springtime <laughs> and how wonderful it is when we start to like plant things and it starts to warm up and I feel like the world just kind of wakes up and there's nothing better than just like going out into your garden and picking the berries that you planted earlier this year or watching them kind of grow and go in their different phases. And I love being able to, even when it's cold outside um, or wherever you are, like painting something can bring it to you. And um, I just wanted us to paint something that was just like a fun reminder of how warm and bright spring is. So um, thank you so much for painting with me. I had a blast. And so at this stage, you can see like, you can just start erasing some of those pencil marks. And because I used a regular pencil, they should just come right off. Um, if you used a watercolor pencil, I think you have to use water to like blend those out, but that will leave color. So just be careful. Okay, that's enough. Um, if you are on Instagram, you can tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. We love seeing how, what you guys create. And we also love seeing the variation. If you're on Facebook, you can join our watercolor group there. That's called let's make art watercolor. It is a very large group, but it's so kind and supportive. And I really think that when you have a community behind you, it's so much easier to get things done and to tackle something or to put yourself out there. Um, so go ahead and join that. That's called let's make art watercolor. And if you're interested in painting this box and getting these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Michael, thank you for being here and for your berry knowledge. You're, you're very welcome. Akeen knowledge? Akeen. A-C-H-E-N-E. Akeen. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye.